Did you have a losing year this past year? Did your losses that you realized exceed the gains you realized? Well, you might be able to get a tax break on it. Currently, there's not much of a tax break, but should it be changed? That's the topic of today's show. Welcome to the Clinton Donnelly Show, where I explore how taxation and regulation affects our daily lives as investors. Now, a word from our sponsors. This show is sponsored by Crypto Tax Audit, the income tax experts for U.S. crypto traders. They offer a full suite of crypto tax reporting services for medium and large size investors and companies. They can calculate your crypto gains report a complete tax return for crypto income and defend you in an IRS audit. Are you frustrated with using online crypto tax services to calculate your capital gains? Are you a high frequency trader? Use NFTs, play to earn, DeFi, DGen? Crypto tax audit can do it all. No client is too complex for their in-house crypto accountants. Better still, they will defend their results in an audit by the IRS. No online crypto tax service offers that. Frustrated that your accountant doesn't understand crypto taxes? Our CPAs and enrolled agents do complete crypto tax returns for breakfast. They use a bulletproof crypto tax return methodology to prepare a tax return that does not attract IRS attention. Crypto Tax Audit also offers an exclusive one-of-a-kind audit defense membership service. It's like car insurance for your tax return. If any member's return gets selected by the IRS for an audit of crypto reporting, they will defend you at no additional charge for the entire life of the audit. You also get the confidence knowing that they can defend your results if the IRS starts asking questions. No crypto tax firm has defended as many crypto traders and IRS audits as Crypto Tax Audit. They have an amazing win rate. Go to CryptoTaxAudit.com to schedule a private tax consultation today. They are your one-stop shop for all your crypto tax needs. Consult a professional. CryptoTaxAudit.com. Now, back to the show. I'm your host, Clinton Donnelly. My Twitter handle is Crypto Tax Fixer. I have a law degree specializing in international financial regulation, and I have tax clients in over 71 countries. The opinions expressed in this show are not legal advice. Tax and regulations are complex and subtle. Experts can disagree. Everyone's situation is unique. Always consult a tax professional. Hey, 2022 was a hard year for many investors who realized many losses. But the tax code only lets taxpayers deduct a maximum of $3,000 for capital losses on their tax returns. If you lost $100,000, it would take you 34 years to recover that. I propose that Congress increase the capital loss limitation in Code Section 1211 to $15,000 starting this year, retroactively and inflation adjusted thereafter. Let's review how our capital gains are taxed now. It's a bit convoluted, so here's a simple summary for crypto investors. Whenever you sell, exchange, or otherwise dispose of property, you realize a gain or loss. Many crypto investors make the mistake of thinking they are taxed only when they trade for U.S. dollars. That's wrong. You could receive fiat when you trade or tokens or stablecoins in exchange for your crypto. They are all realized gains or losses, all subject to taxation or credit on your tax. 
unrealized gains and losses are not taxable until they are realized by being disposed of. First, divide your capital gains and losses into short-term and long-term. Long-term means the asset was held for more than a year. If the sum of the short-term gains and losses for the year are a net gain, then the net gain is added to your adjusted gross income and taxed at your ordinary tax bracket. For long-term net gains, they are taxed at the lower rate of 15% for most people, 20% for people with taxable incomes over a half a million, more or less. If capital losses are more than capital gains, the difference must be deducted. The annual limit on the amount of capital loss that can be deducted is $3,000. Losses in excess of that limit are carried over to the next year. Why is there, a, there's also a distinction between short-term and long-term. Why is that? Well, Congress wants to motivate taxpayers to invest capital long-term because it stimulates the economy. That's how a capitalist economy works. Business owners and entrepreneurs need the confidence to trust that investors will not pull their funding quickly. Day traders and short-term traders are not genuinely investing in economic growth. Why are losses limited? Congress wants to offer some tax breaks for investors who tried but lost money. So Congress limits how much loss can be deducted to avoid overly rewarding bad investing. A $3,000 deduction is worth $800 more or less, depending upon your tax bracket. That's how much it is on the bottom line. $800 is a very puny tax credit compared to the child tax credit where the government gives you $2,000 for having a child. I guess the government would prefer you make love, not profit. The $3,000 limit started in 1977. The limit was not adjusted annually for inflation like so many others. If it had the capital loss limitation would be closer to $15,000 now. That would be worth a tax savings of $4,500, more or less, depending upon your tax bracket. That tax savings is not so significant as to distort normal investing behavior, but it is much better relief for the middle-income investor. There are arguments against raising this limit. The Congressional Research Service, which is a nonprofit that works for Congress, produced a report in September of 2022 recommending that the $3,000 capital loss limit not be changed. They felt that the limit unduly benefited the wealthy. I think their conclusions are narrow and wrong. The behavior of wealthy would not be distorted by increasing the loss limit. The amount of loss would be unchanged. What has changed is how soon the taxpayer can benefit from the excess loss. What do you think? Should the capital loss limit be increased to $15,000 with an annual inflation adjustment? Should the amount be higher or lower or stay the same at $3,000? Add your comments to the show. If you want Congress to make a change, here is what you can do. You need to contact both your senators, and your congressmen. You can reach them at this website, usa.gov slash elected hyphen officials. You can go there and you can find out who your officials are and you can send them a note telling them you want the capital loss limit increased to 15,000 or whatever number you put it. Thank you very much for listening to the show. And as always, remember, taxes are sexy.